Hello people, my name is Tom and I'm making a new ambitious game for the Sockball Patreon. It's going to feature a big world and I don't have much time left and I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle this. The game will be similar to another game I made two years ago called Ginseng Hero. And in that game I made a whole world by putting things like plants and stones and other props uh, in the world by hand which took a lot of time. So this is what a simple scene looks like with just the base floor. And I don't want the world <laughs> to look like this because this is boring. So I want to fill this with some interesting elements. The first step I took into making an interesting world was creating a tool that allows me to alter the height of a terrain so that the character can walk up and down hills to give it more depth. The game engine I use, Unity, has a, an own terrain editor, but to be honest, I never used it, so I don't really know how to use it. So I decided to create some own tools. So we start this scene by just a plain quad. So to give it more height, I created a tool. It's called a, it's called a podding tool. And it allows me to define a shape by moving those points and then I can press a single button generate and it creates a 3d mesh a hill amazing so now we have three hills but there's still not much going on it's it's only two colors so I want to have some more texture on the ground so I can use a similar tool uh, as the hill one to create patches of sand so I can still like with the pudding define a shape and then press a button generate and then we have sand it's essentially a hill but it's flat so it's a 2d hill so we can use that move it around copy paste it make some other shapes, smaller perhaps. So now we have a scene with some depth. I mean the hills go up, but there's nothing going down. So I present to you something similar to a hill, but it doesn't go up, it goes down. It's a hole. So I can also, again, define a shape and then cut something out of the base floor to give it more, even more depth. So again, generate, and now it's like an inverse hill. And I can also create some water. Boom. And then the edges look a bit rough now, but you can smooth all those points. And then it looks amazing. A technique I use for most of the tools I'm showing in this video is uh, called the Bechet path and I'll show you in Illustrator how it works um, basically you can define points and then the algorithm smooths a path between those points so you can for example just pick four points and then it creates this curved shape which is really nice to look at so you can have this this shape and then if you move one of the points it automatically updates all the, the lines. So you can make a lot of different shapes by just dragging four points in a specific position. Which is really helpful for, for the hills I use and the, the sand patches and such. So here we have the scene with a couple hills. And I think it already looks more fun and more interesting. To interact with. The feet of the character also adjust to the, the slope of the hill which is nice. So it's still an empty scene but it's a little bit more fun to, to be around in. So now we can start filling the, the empty scene with some interesting props. So there's not only things going on with the terrain but also things standing on the terrain so 
A nice thing to add is a flower because the game resolves around bugs and a miniature world. So I thought the flower would be a good starting point. So it generates a line and then on top of that it puts a, a model, a flower top. So to be able to make a lot of different looking flowers I, I made sure I could generate some uh, flowers by randomizing the properties of the, of the line and also the top and the rotation and such. So I can press randomize and then the flower is slightly different each time and I can rotate it as well. And to add more variety to, to the, the plants, I also made this plant without a flower top. It's basically the same as the flower, but it points downwards a little bit and it, of course it lacks the top. So it's more like a, a, a grass blade, I guess. Um, I can also randomize it and the color changes and also the, the curve of the, the tip. This is big one and then we might want a smaller one next to it, like that. So I'm basically letting the computer make decisions for me because when you make a game you have to make a lot of creative decisions and it's nice to have someone or something in this case helping you with that. So to have more uh, smaller things in the world I also have this mushroom which I can of course put somewhere and then also give a random scale so maybe a, a tall one here and then a smaller one next to it might look good please become small yeah perfect <laughs> so now we walk around in this new scene with a lot of plants and there's already so much to look at it only took maybe 30 seconds to put all those different flowers and plants in here. Of course you can walk through the water as well. So there's already much going on now, which is nice. So now we have this area with flowers and mushrooms and some hills and water, but there's still this void around it, which is it, it's not natural, it's not fun to look at and you might wander off and then end, no, uh, end up nowhere. So um, to make it easier for myself I made a tool, again it's a Bejay path and it allows me to define the border of the world. So I can drag those points and then it creates some sort of, some sort of wall with a texture on it of, of plants, it can be anything of course. So in a cave you would maybe put on a texture of rocks or whatever. Um, so I can I can put this here. Maybe it needs to be a bit smaller. I like this this area here with the lake. So now we we've made a very small yet interesting area in a couple minutes I think. So now we are in this closed off area with some plants and water and then we went from a simple plane to, to this. I think it's nice. We could still put some, some things here of course or maybe make the world smaller by dragging the border to, to here. Or maybe I want a very big area and it with a big lake in it so I can make a very big puddle with the tool and then also increase the border. I hope I gave you a good impression of how I am creating the world for this game and as always thank you for watching, see you next time. If you like this video please consider joining our Patreon. For $3 you will get a new game every month as well as one of our older games. And for $5 you will get the games and early access to videos like this one.